Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, we are B-Link, and welcome to the first peer-to-peer uh, -peer bike share movement in the world. So uh, let me explain what we do. So our service enables you to rent out your own bike to make money easily just from one bike. Anywhere, regardless of whether you are an individual or a company. B-Link is an entirely different model of bike share where anybody can start a bike share using our smart lock and app. It's very easy to use to rent out, prepare a bike, set a port, which is a pickup location, and install our smart lock. To ride, find a bike, get there, and scan the QR code to unlock. What we developed during this middle project was the smart lock and the software. So in the past seven months, we gave everything we got to this project. So today, we would like to share some of our stories with you. So let me begin with how we came up with this idea. <coughs> so in 2016, um, I was asked by my university to give a one-week uh, statistics course for the incoming student. And by the way, I'm a professor. And uh, the lecture was here, and I was staying there. And it's about 1.2 kilometers. <coughs> the bus was very inconvenient. It was going around here. And I didn't want to pay for the taxi. So I, was, I walked from here to here every day. And I really wished I could rent a bike at the hotel. And this was not the only experience I wished I could rent a bike. Even at my own apartment, sometimes I want to rent a bike. So let me explain. So this is my apartment, and I want to do shopping here, then meet my friend there. I have a car, so I can do this with my car, but parking is expensive and bus and train are very inconvenient for multi-destination trip like this. And this is very hilly area, so normal bike is not an option. So in this kind of situation, I want to rent an electric bike at my apartment. And allow me to give you one more example to make my point. So I went to a station called Juso, and this is a very small station, but I needed to visit a company and there are many small companies around there. So when I came here, I tried to catch a taxi for more than 15 minutes in a very hot day, and I really wished I could pick up a bike on the street. Then the question is, why there are no bike shares in these locations? When you think about this, you would realize that the existing bike share faces uh, two problems. So let's think about this using this as an example. So why there is no bike share at my apartment? Well, the first problem is infrastructure cost, such as bike, labor, and port. If you put the bike there, then you would have to hire someone to take care of it, which doesn't seem to make sense. So um, having an isolated port like this is difficult. The second problem is that they don't know that people want to rent a bike here. So if you can't uh, identify the needs, then there will be no service. So this is about the difficulty of location research. So um, anybody who has done uh, serious empirical research knows that data gathering is very costly in terms of time, effort, and money. And even if you have tons of money, it's impossible to deliver the entire information you observe. Maybe in front of you, you observe a constellation of information, but when you deliver that information, you can only pick brighter stars in the constellation. And sometimes those brighter stars are not bright enough, even if the constellation itself is bright. So when you observe existing bike share, you can see a pattern they tend to choose a location with a single bright star. And that itself is fine, but by focusing on these locations, 
they are missing out millions of bright constellations. So then the next question is, is there a good solution? And the solution was right under my <coughs> nose. So this is the parking lot at my apartment. And in this small space, we have one, two, three, and four very expensive electric bikes. So we thought, why can't these bikes be rented? So our solution became ordinary people renting out their own bikes to other ordinary people. Now let me explain why this idea makes sense. And there are two reasons. First, infrastructure costs are on the bike owners. So this solves the first problem of the existing bike share. Second, ordinary people have a lot of local information. They know local transportation glitches, they know how people do grocery shopping, and all sorts of things. And so they are in a very good position to identify the needs for bike share. So ordinary people have the infrastructure and can identify the needs for bike share. So, well, let, just let them do the bike share and we take the commission on the sales. So this is how we came up with this idea. So our solution uh, was not more uh, location research. Um, our solution was not, not AI. Our solution was not a bicycle that can fly. Um, our solution was incentive. If you rent out a bike, you can make money. And this induces people who know bright constellations to rent out. So uh, by definition, we don't know where bikes are going to be rented, but we think these uh, three markets have potential. So the first market is where Airbnb hosts rent out bikes to their guests. 86% um, of hosts told us they want to rent out. And the second market is apartment areas where people who have electric bikes rent them out to their neighbors. 66% uh, of survey participants said they want to ride, and 67% said they want to rent out. And the third market is where hotels rent out bikes to their guests. 84% uh, of business travelers said they want to ride, and 75% of managers, hotel managers said they want to rent out. Now, to enable this service, um, David and Krupari uh, developed smart lock and software from absolute scratch. So, uh, so our smart lock uh, communicates with Bluetooth and it has GPS inside. And it, has, it requires only three volts to open, so it's very efficient. So let me demonstrate. Okay. And so, and you can also uh, open the lock manually as well. So let me show you. So uh, this makes the troubleshooting uh, much easier. And let me emphasize that this is the first smart lock that allows you to open automatically as well as manually. Now, the, our software has three layers. Uh, the first layer is for data access. Um, our focus is to keep the data secure while allowing us to analyze data freely. So we separated the user identity data from the rest of the data. The second layer is for business logic, uh, such as account creation. And authentication is handled by industry standard protocol, uh, JWT token. And the third layer is uh, mobile application. So let me show you how you write. So this is the um, uh, main screen. Uh, to write, you tap that button, and then you scan the QR code, and final confirmation, you tap this, and the log will open. This is the screen when you are renting. You can unlock another bike, 
uh, another bike with that bottom. And this function is useful for family travelers because you don't need to <coughs> create account for each member. And when you are renting multiple bikes, uh, the screen switches to this. When you end right, <coughs> you tap that bottom and you slide to end right and you can evaluate the bike. Now, I would like to talk about our marketing strategy and this task was led by Anna. And our strategy is to encourage users to form a habit of using our service. And there are four phases uh, to achieve this. Uh, first, uh, there must be a trigger. Uh, that's uh, something that raises the awareness of our service. And we can achieve this by advertisement or by word of mouth. Our focus is word of mouth. And user, then user have to take the action of using it. Uh, we can encourage it by advertisement or by making our service easy to use. Our focus is the ease of use. Then there must be a reward from using our service. The convenience of bike ride is the main reward, but there can be other rewards um, such as social recognition. And we are going to come back to this later. And then there is investment phase. Investment simply refers to the effort you put in the service. And people often use the service because they have invested effort before. So we have to encourage people to interact more with our service. Now, we have an idea to kill uh, these uh, two, two birds with one stone with what we call um, wish function. So let me talk about those things. So why, why do we focus on <coughs> word of mouth? Well, because it's a powerful thing. Uh, just a moderate chatting can spread our service very far and very fast. Well, this doesn't mean we don't do anything. Um, there are many things we can do to make um, people want to talk about our service. <coughs> for example, we can involve users uh, for the service development. It's fun for them, uh, it's useful for us, and when people see their opinions reflected in our service, they will surely want to talk about our service. So we have actually started having uh, user meetings to improve our service user interface. Uh, we had two meetings with potential riders and we had one meeting with potential owner. Now the ease of use. So uh, in terms of um, uh, user experience, uh, the existing bike share tends to have harder the better and the resurgent attitude. Uh, we decided to go the entire opposite. So we relentlessly focus on the ease of use. Then the wish function, let me talk about this one. So these functions, so this is what user can do. A user can put my wish on the map where he or she wants to rent a bike. And other users can put likes on the wish. And this function has um, three effects. First, uh, it provides a useful way to invest effort. It increases the interaction. And the likes from other users act as social recognition, which increases the reward from using our service. And owners can use these wishes to find out good places to rent out. So uh, we started a pilot project uh, we purchased one electric bike and let one of our neighbors borrow it. So he, my neighbor, goes from there to here uh, to work with his non-electric bike. And by the way, this is very hilly area, so we thought uh, maybe electric bike would be useful. And the first time he rented, he told me, wow, this is so good, it's so useful, and it was so easy. And then he rented one more time, and he liked it even more, so he ended up renting five times. So just imagine uh, how much we improved his life. Because from here to there, the elevation is 200 meters. Okay. So let me tell you way forward. 
we are talking about uh, mass production design uh, with two companies. We are collaborating with uh, Linkalock, a smart lock maker in San Francisco, and we are preparing for uh, patent application. So ideal initial launch will be July this year, um, but for that we have to bring our lock to mass production and we will have to secure funding for that. Okay, so this is our team. Uh, we are a team of four um, very idealistic individuals uh, from four different countries speaking five different uh, languages. <laughs> and we, are, we believe in uh, diversity, uh, we believe in compassion, and we believe in uh, treating others with uh, dignity, and we are conducting ourselves accordingly, I think. So uh, I think it is not coincident that we came up with this idea because this is a service of equal participation in an increasingly unequal society. <coughs> this is a service of economic empowerment, and uh, this is a service where you discover your own self-worth. So um, please join uh, this uh, new and exciting movement, and together we can improve a millions, million of ord ordinary people's life, like my neighbor. Um, it sounds like uh, a lot of work, uh, but uh, please do not worry because we try not to ask too much from you. In fact, we only ask two things, email address and password. <laughs> Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. <coughs>